I guess we can get started now. Um, so hi everyone, my name is uh, Kenneth. Um, I'm one of the founders of Luma Prince uh, with my brother Young. Um, also here, joined here with uh, Lindsay, uh, sorry, Sarah <laughs> and Lindsay. Hi guys, um, my name is Sarah, I'm the marketing manager at Luma Prince and this is Lindsay, she's our marketing analyst. Hi guys. So yeah. We'll be helping out with Ken today. <laughs> Um, so this will be the first of uh, weekly webinars uh, that we'll be starting up. Um, the we want to be able to share, you know, what the company does, uh, information about our products, uh, new things going on, um, as well as uh, leave time for questions and answers uh, towards the end of the sessions. Um, so it's a way for us to, you know, get in touch with um, all our customers and anyone who uh, are looking to work with Blueprints. I um, mean, really connect face to face and uh, hopefully help put some uh, names and faces uh, behind what we actually do. Um, so since this is our, is our first webinar, just to provide a little bit of company history, um, we started in 2010. Um, as I mentioned, I've, uh, I started this with Young, my brother. Um, it really started in uh, our second bedroom, and then we kind of grew from there. Um, have, you know, thanks to all our customer base, uh, everyone who's partnered with us. Uh, right now, we are uh, in two locations, so uh, one in Anaheim, California, Southern California, our second facility is in uh, Louisville, uh, Kentucky. Uh, 20, we're about 26,000 square feet in uh, Anaheim and uh, 40,000 square feet in Kentucky. Um, we have about 100 employees now and 25 uh, printers, um, printing various artwork like on canvas, on finer paper prints, metal prints, et cetera. Um, so the topic for today is uh, sharing a little bit of details about our canvas prints. Um, and I guess feel free to, uh, we can make this uh, live and interactive too. So if uh, anyone has any questions along the way, feel free to speak up. Um, and we can always have questions towards the uh, end of the session as well, in case you have any <laughs> questions on any random topics that um, are not related to what we're talking about specifically at the moment. Um, so to get started, uh, so sharing a little bit about our canvas prints, um, just an example of a canvas print here. Uh, we uh, print on, uh, so the canvas is made of uh, a couple things. One is uh, the canvas material. Um, we print on both, uh, our main material, <clears throat> excuse me, is poly cotton canvas at 360 to 380 uh, GSM. So it's, you know, a nice heavyweight canvas. Um, we also print on a polyester canvas for our more enterprise type customers who are uh, looking for a shopper, um, sharper price point. Uh, that one's at a, about 320 to 340 GSM. Uh, both materials are archival quality. Um, what that means is that, that the print would last for over uh, 100 years if it's kept indoors. Obviously, if you put it outdoors, the direct sunlight would cause fading at a, slow, at a faster rate. Um, we use uh, genuine Epson inks on our, uh, on our canvas prints. Um, so that uh, the inks are you know, really bright and vibrant. So you can see that in, in the different prints that we make, the color really pops uh, coming out of it. Um, the wood that we, we use are uh, solid wood stretcher bars. Um, so they they come in uh, three different sizes, three quarter inch canvas, um, one and a half inch canvas. And so this is a three quarter inch canvas size. Um, solid wood stretcher bars. Uh, this is a uh, one and a quarter inch. Um, and then this is the uh, one and a half inch thick stretcher bars. Um, the, so the, uh, the, the wood that we use is, is a hardwood that keeps uh, keeps the wood from bowing, uh, keeps the canvas from bowing over time. Um, so how is the canvas made? Uh, so basically after we print the canvas, we um, we cut and join all the frames in-house. So we have a set of common sizes, like popular size that, on our website that you can order from, but we also make uh, custom sizes, uh, any size from five by seven. Uh, all the way up to a maximum of 54, uh, 54 inch wide by 110 inches long. So just shy, shy of 10 feet. Um, so we can get pretty large uh, canvases if you need. 
Um, after the we cut and join the frames, we uh, assemble the canvas, stretch the canvas onto a frame. So um, basically, the canvas is pulled top uh, around the back and stapled on. Um, things to watch out for for so what sets us apart in terms of canvas product quality, right? Um, one thing is our stretching quality. So uh, when you get canvases, you want you want the canvas to be tight. Um, here, like a drum-like feel when, when you touch it. Uh, the other thing is really uh, the care in production. Um, so especially for things with solid borders, um, if, the, if the production is not careful, then like sometimes the solid borders will spill over the sides. Uh, but you know, our team takes very, uh, especially for solid borders, takes special care to make sure that um, the edges line up nice and even. So it doesn't, the white, especially the white doesn't go to the front or the colors don't, uh, come over to the side too much. So here's an example of it being nicely aligned. Um, we have a machine aided uh, stretching process where our team still ha hand stretches the canvas and particularly for the canvas that needs more particular alignment, uh, the hand stretching helps us achieve the, uh, the more precision behind how we make products. Um, any questions so far from anyone? Okay, now I'll carry on. Um, so uh, what's the ordering process? Um, so when order is placed, uh, we begin with prepping the uh, print files. Um, so our customer service team uh, takes a look at the print files, um, checks over the image quality uh, as much as they can. A lot of times we'll, help, we'll catch things that um, like things that might not be correct with the image. Uh, of course, we can't catch everything, but you know our customer team does try to give a, a eyeball test <laughs> on, on the prints to make sure the quality is good. Um, for image uh, preparation, we recommend um, 200 DPI. Uh, Im uh, the image is at 200 DPI and Adobe RGB color profile. Um, Oh yes, so saw a message from Kevin, looking for info not on the website. Um, so we are relaunching our website in uh, a week or two. In fact, our next webinar will be on uh, a demo of the new site. So the new site will also have a lot more of this information on it. Um, we will also do a deep dive in terms of image preparation in one of our future webinars as well. Uh, so once the image is uh, uploaded and the order is placed. Uh, then we uh, do the printing. Um, uh, we have the printers print the thing, print the images. Uh, we sh as we mentioned, we stretch it. And then um, for packaging, we uh, uh, wrap each canvas in a plastic bag so that it gets protected from scratches during shipment. Uh, and then we put it in uh, in a, well, <laughs> put it in the car in a cardboard box and mail it out. Um, for framed canvases, uh, since the frames are more sensitive than uh, the normal canvas, the stretch canvas, um, we do uh, put some crush protection on it. So, uh, what we do is we strap and tape the uh, framed canvas into a larger piece of cardboard so that if the box like bounces around. Um, it adds that level of crush protection uh, for the frame strip. We also put in um, foam corners onto the frames to protect the edges a little bit more in case it's protected from getting banged around. And then again, we box it. Um, our standard production, oh, let me also share the shipping label. Um, oops, if you can see this. So this is uh, a sample shipping label that we have. The, I don't know how clear this is, but uh, we put your company name as the ship from name here. So it's uh, personalized to, um, to have your store, your name or your store's name uh, on the label. So it looks like it's coming from your store. Uh, the Luma Prince branding by default does not uh, appear anywhere in the package. Um, when you place an order, you can also add in uh, upload like a PDF file that we'll, we can print and slip into the package for you. Um, so you can 
there's two areas to do that. One is uh, during checkout, you can upload a different one. For example, if you want to include an invoice uh, or a customized thank you note uh, for your customers, you can upload it uh, during the checkout process. Um, the second place that you can upload it is in your store settings. So if you have a default uh, thank you note, or let's say um, you have a note that says, you know, come back, at, uh, shop at a store again and get uh, Uh, if you want to shop at our store and get a 10% uh, discount off your next order, um, we can, uh, if you upload it in your store settings, uh, we'd automatically print that for each order and put that inside. Um, our standard production time is three business days uh, for canvas prints and frame canvas prints. Uh, if you need expedited production, we also have next day and same day production. Uh, for orders placed uh, before, I believe, 9 a.m. Um, Pacific time. Um, so any orders placed then for same day, we'll get it out the same day. Uh, if it's placed after uh, the 9 a.m. cutoff, we'll get it out within the next business day. Um, so we have uh some common questions that uh we got beforehand uh one is oh any other question any qu other let me see okay oh, here it goes okay so we have some questions here um Hi, Beth. Thanks for your compliments. Uh, does the file need to be in CMYK or is it okay to be in RGB? Um, is it, it's better to be in RGB. Uh, in fact, so RGB also has a couple of different um, types of RGB. There's sRGB, Adobe RGB. Um, I think there's one more above that, but we recommend using Adobe RGB uh, that has a much wider color range there. Um, than sRGB. Uh, I think the next one up uh, is we create a really, really large file size. So that and that one probably goes a little bit beyond what's needed. Um, so we recommend Adobe RGB. Uh, files can also be uploaded in CMYK, but we actually usually do not recommend that. Uh, we do print in Adobe RGB. Um, so in the conversion process from CMYK to RGB, Sometimes there's a little bit of a color shift, uh, depending on how the colors map. Um, therefore, we usually recommend uh, submitting files in Adobe RGB uh, instead of CMYK. Um, does that answer your question? Okay, great. Um, Walk us through fulfillment in five minutes. Okay, I hope I've done that. Uh, but if you have any other questions, please ask. How automated is the process for a Shopify print on demand store? Um, for example, if a customer orders a print off my online store, do I have to manually input the order? This is from Phil. Um, or is there a way to have the product automated send an order to you and have it white label shipped to my client with my company logo? Oh, I forgot to mention. Um, so in the back of the canvas, um, we have a one inch white space. Uh, on the bottom, you can upload your logo to your store settings, and we would print your logo inside this one inch uh, white space. Um, so our Shopify app uh, does help to sync orders from your Shopify store uh, into your Luma Prints account. Um, so then you don't have to manually input the orders. Uh, the first time around when a new product configuration comes in, uh, you would have to manually um, place the order for that. Uh, but if the same order comes in after that with the same product config, um, you can get the store set up to automatic, automatically process and fulfill those orders um, as they come in, if you turn that setting on. Um, and yes, all our products are white labeled. Um, so to have your own branding on it, uh, both on the shipping label 
uh, as well as the back of the canvas if you upload your logo. Um, and again, if you have any, uh, if you want to include any printouts with your own branding or messaging on it, you can upload those too. Um, we also have uh, Etsy integration as well, uh, direct Etsy integration API. Um, so we, we can also automatically sync uh, orders from Etsy stores. Uh, for other platforms, we're building the integrations into our new website. Um, but in the meantime, uh, ShipStation is available as a bridge to connect a whole, whole bunch of other stores uh, or platforms into LumaPrints. Um, so question from Mike, uh, I've had canvases become less tight on the stretchers after hanging on the wall for a while. Is this expected? Um, so because canvas and the stretcher bars are organic materials, they do expand and contract, uh, depending on the weather. Um, for poly cotton canvas, uh, since it is a cloth, there's a trick to, uh, getting to retightening the canvas basically. Um, you can take some water, uh, either a spray bottle or just a damp cloth, wipe, wipe the back of the canvas. Uh, then as it shrinks, as it dries, it'll shrink and it'll pull the canvas back taut again. Um, to accelerate the process, you can actually take a blow dryer uh, and blow dry the back of the canvas after you wet it. Um, so it'll be kind of like putting, <laughs> putting clothes in the, into your dryer. It'll, it'll shrink, uh, shrink the material uh, even faster or tighter. So um, that's where to get the canvases back tight again. A uh, message from Beth, you did a pair of art prints from, for a friend of mine in 2015. It was eight foot by seven foot each, uh, so huge, it's gorgeous. He was interviewed by two print reporters and one TV reporter. It looked good on even in the print photos. Thanks Beth. Um, well, I guess a follow-up question from Mike, is that a temporary fix? How often can you do that? Uh, you can do it as often as you want. Um, it's usually the, for the canvas that we make, um, they are usually pretty tight. So unless there's a huge temperature change, it shouldn't go too bad. Um, and I guess just like shrunken clothing, usually once you shrink the canvas, it stays a little bit more shrunken. Uh, it shouldn't expand too much. Um, are there frame canvases printed and framed in Louisville location? Yes. So we, uh, for our canvas products, we uh, print and ship out of both of our locations. Um, usually we'll try to ship it from the closest location to where it's being shipped. Uh, depending on um, production capacity, sometimes we shift production around between our two facilities. Uh, so another question from Kevin. Um, oh, I saw Lindsay just answer that. Looking forward to seeing a demo of a person ordering one of our pieces on Etsy and Shopify and how you fulfill it. That's all I need, demo of the process, start to finish. Um, create your own store so we can see what customers of ours experience. Thanks. Um, yeah, so next week, uh, we'll be running through a demo of our website, our new website and the ordering process there. Uh, Mike, yes, we do frame canvases out of both locations. Uh, tour of our production facility. We'll take a video of that next time and, and post it up. Uh, the question from Joe. I think that's, well, uh, while we wait for other questions to come in, we'll um, answer some other, other questions that were pre-submitted. Um, what image file types, uh, JPEG, PNG, TIFF files, do you recommend when we send for print? Uh, we recommend uh, Adobe RGB, uh, sorry, Adobe RGB, JPEG files. Um, TIFF files tend to be pretty big. So uh, you, I would say usually there is not that much of a difference between a TIFF file and a JPEG file. 
um, or like obviously both have to be, to be clear and sharp or what you want to print on it uh, when you upload it. Um, but again, usually there is not much difference between a TIFF and a JPEG. There are some exceptions to that, I would say. Um, again, we will cover this in a more in a different uh, webinar. But uh, for times where there are color gradients, that sometimes where a TIFF file would be more would be better uh, than a JPEG file, particularly for gradients like for let's say for uh, sunset gradients where um, the JPEG may not necessarily cover that smooth of a gradient. And one of our customers uh, has these really vivid uh, neon -y or like really purplish type gradients in his uh, images. Um, when he first submitted them, uh, there was some banding. Uh, banding is basically like, You'll see you'll see like streaks across uh, the the prints. Um, there's some banding on his pictures, and that was caused from the uh, file the basically the file type not being able to capture the the amount of resolution that's needed uh, from his images because of the basically the the amount of color space that Adobe RGB covers. Um, in that case, um, when we we helped him print his files using TIFF files, and that solved the banding issue for those really like uh, fine color gradients. Um, but again, generally for most photos, it's outside of you know the, the prints with the really fine gradients, uh, Adobe RGB JPEGs are good. Um, any plans for acrylic prints? Yes. Um, we are planning to add flatbed prints onto our offerings uh, sometime in the future. Um, maybe in the next six months, um, but that is in our uh, product pipeline. Uh, thanks for the question, Mike. Uh, Charles Ng asks, uh, while our studio monitors are color calibrated periodically, is there a color profile that you can send us for preview purposes for my monitors before sending the images out to you? Um, we can send out a uh, color profile that you can use in Photoshop to color proof uh, the image. To, make, to see whatever you uh, have on your monitor in case there are any colors that are out of color range. Um, generally, we, well, we color calibrate our printers too. So generally the colors that you see on your monitor, if it's color calibrated, uh, should be the colors that are printed out. Um, you can also order a, a rolled uh, color proof um, that will ship to you rolled. Um, and then you can match it against what you see in your, your monitor as well. Uh, for particularly sensitive images. Um, question from Mike, what is your background? How do you get into the print business? Um, my background is in uh, economics and I studied economics and computer science. Um, we got into the print business because um, we wanted to offer uh, really affordable art to people. Um, before when I was younger, like all the artwork seemed like pretty pricey and out of my price budget. Um, so we wanted to be able to create offerings where people can get really nice artwork, um, but at affordable prices. And then um, we also want to be able to support, you know, art artists and photographers and entrepreneurs and uh, running your own businesses. Um, so that, you know, since it is a living uh, or, or a, for a lot of our customers. So we really enjoy supporting our customer base um, for them to, to do their thing. Uh, question or comment from Phil, thank you. This is great info and I appreciate you guys bringing this together. I'm mostly interested in canvas and metal prints. I've ordered samples in the past and the price for the price, they're very good. I own and operate 
a professional photo lab in Toronto, Canada, and I would like a fulfillment company in the States since shipping duties can be pretty hefty. Uh, your quality is better than other fulfillment POD companies from what I've experienced on Printify and Printful. How do you handle shipping costs on larger oversized pieces and especially for international orders? Um, shipping costs relative to usually the sales price is pretty okay up to, I'd say, um, there are break points for shipping costs where the shipping carriers charge incrementally more price, more, more costs. Um, up to about 30 by 40 is one shipping cost price break. Uh, then the next shipping cost break is up to uh, 30 by 60, 40 by 40, 36 by 48. Um, up to about that point, I think is the, the shipping costs are in the 20s of dollars generally. Uh, after that, let's say up to like a 40 by 60 or 45 by 60, the uh, shipping costs do get pretty high. They're in the hundreds of dollars. Um, so uh, we basically just pass on whatever shipping costs that our carriers charge us uh, on as a, as a shipping cost. Um, we've been able to negotiate pretty good shipping costs from the carriers. Um, uh, particularly for from FedEx. So uh, again, we just pass on whatever savings that we can get from them onto you. Uh, for larger orders, uh, generally, I, I'd say the 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 shipping cost gets either you know just charge the customers or price into the prints. Uh, for international orders, they are trickier. International shipping is pretty expensive. Um, so uh, we do that, we do offer international shipping on a limited basis, uh, but they, from what we've experienced, um, there's generally more problems with international shipments too, meaning like uh, if the end customer has to pay for customs duties, et cetera, or like not being shipped to the right address. So um, we do do international shipping on request, but uh, generally we don't recommend it as much. A question from Mike. Um, how are you able to offer your canvases for lower price than your competitors? What's your competitive advantage? Um, we uh, we do do things. Well, we, we buy our materials in bulk, um, so that helps save on our uh, on our cost basis. Um, we do have a lot of we invest in a lot of back end automation too. Uh, so automatic. You know, order processing, we uh, put QR codes on the back of the canvases um, for, in, for to aid us in the order processing and shipment uh, process. So that uh, helps us be able to create savings and then pass these savings onto you. Um, and again, our, our goal is to offer really high quality products at the best prices that we can um, for our customers. Um, Kevin, have to go. Thank you for joining. Um, and I really appreciate your questions and comments. Uh, so other questions that we uh, received beforehand. Uh, can I embellish my own LumaPrints canvas print? Uh, yes, you can. Uh, we have an example here of... Let me bring this down. Some embellishing that was been put on top of a canvas print. Uh, so I'm not sure how this clearly this will come through on the uh, video. But you can see uh, some of the, the paint put on top of here. Um, I guess if we turn this sideways a little bit, you can see uh, see the texture of the paint a little bit more. So yes, you can paint on this. I believe this is acrylic paint. Um, I'm interested in your prints too. Will you do another webinar on those paper inks? Uh, yeah, so one of our uh, future webinars, maybe another two or three weeks will be on uh, our fine art paper prints. And we just launched a uh, frame fine art prints too. Uh, so we'll cover that also. Um, 
Question from uh, John from Florida that was pre-submitted. Are the canvas prints polyester or polycotton? Uh, pros and cons of each. Um, so the standard prints ordered on Loomer prints are uh, polycotton canvas. Um, the pros and cons of each. Um, so polycotton canvas, one of the benefits there is that if you spray the back of the canvas, that will shrink more because of the cotton uh, inside the material. Um, polyester, that won't shrink as much uh, if you kind of use that water trick. Um, again, both are archival quality. Um, for stretch canvas, most people actually can't really tell the difference between polycotton and polyester if you uh, look at it from the front. Um, they, they both have 98% uh, Pantone coverage, color coverage. So again, like uh, the inks come out really vibrant on both of these. Um, it's the same uh, coating, color coating, well, not color coating, the same gesso coating uh, that the print is printed on, on both the polyester and the polycotton canvas. So the prints uh, on top of it comes out the same. Um, where it's probably a little bit more noticeable is if you have rolled canvas um, and people are actually you know, touching and feeling the, the canvas just by itself, uh, that's probably where the diff difference between uh, polyester and polycotton canvas is a little bit more apparent. Um, I'd say one other difference between canvas is really the weight of the canvas, the thickness of the canvas. So even for polyester or polycotton canvas, um, the there are varying thicknesses that uh, one can purchase, one, one can get from the canvas stock. Um, we use really thick, uh, uh, for the polyester canvas, we have the canvas is uh, 320 to 340 GSM. Uh, for the poly cotton canvas, it's uh, 360 to 380 GSM. So both are pretty uh, weighty materials and feel pretty nice and thick. Um, question from I hope I pronounce this correctly. Tovo. Tovo? Oh, okay. Um, hi, Tovo. Uh, thanks for setting up the webinar. My name is Tovo. In terms of shipping costs, when fulfillment is automated in Etsy, do we include the price of shipping and the price or, or the shipping separate? Um, what we've uh, recommended, what we recommend to people usually, um, and you, you can figure out what approach works best for you. Um, but what we notice is that it gets pretty complicated if you want to put different pricing for different sizes or try to match the price and weight to it. So the, there are two easy ways about this. One is, um, uh, yes, include the shipping cost in the price of your prints. So just add it in, um, then provide free shipping. Uh, so you know the customers can get like, oh, we have free shipping, right? But <laughs> at the end of the day, it's always including the price somewhere. Um, or offer like a flat rate shipping um, for like, you know, $5.99, $9.99 uh, as a part of the shipping price. Um, another question from Mike. I'm a big fan of your frame canvases. How are the canvases attached to the wood frames? Um, oh, thank you, Sarah. Sarah's amazing. She's helping me grab all the stuff in the back. Um, so we have uh, Z clips that we um, screw into the frame and then screw into the uh, stretch canvas in the back. And this holds the uh, stretch canvas onto the frame. Uh, I didn't see those on larger frames. Sometimes, um, depending on the frame, uh, here's an example of a lar larger one. Uh, these also have Z clips. Uh, sometimes we uh, the frames are nailed into the stretcher bars too. That is sort of more permanent solution. Um, so uh, brat nails will basically just get put across uh, and, and holds the uh, canvas in place. Um, so one more question from uh, Jessica from California. 
will you be offering additional products or merch in the future? Um, for printed canvas, totes, mugs, et cetera, can you recommend a good tote or t-shirt uh, POD printer? Uh, I think we mentioned we are looking to offer the uh, flatbed prints in the future. So prints on acrylic, um, flatbed direct printing on metal prints, uh, prints on wood. Um, so those will be coming out uh, maybe in about six to nine months. Um, we just launched framed canvas prints. Uh, we'll probably offer more frame options for those two, more molding options. Uh, for that, and we might add more color options for the mats also in the near future. Um, question from Bill N. Uh, thank you for your excellent customer service. Uh, your staff has always accommodated adding D-ring wire mounting for gallery displays. As of my last metal print order, gallery hang features require special handling. At the time I was advised, Lumen Prince is aware that gallery ha hanging for metal is of interest to other customers. Are metal prints with D-rings and wire mounting now a standard offering? Um, I'll have to check on that. I think it was a standard offering, uh, but we'll double check to make sure it is. If not, we'll get that added in. Um, one other question that was previously uh, submitted. How can I clean and take care of my canvas? Um, so cleaning and taking, taking care of it's pretty easy. Uh, if it gets dirty, you can just get a wet, um, a wet uh, towel probably, uh, and just wet, wet the dirt off, or you can use a feather duster or something to wipe any dust off. Um, we don't recommend using any kind of caustic soaps or abrasives uh, on it, but you know, some anything really gentle is fine. Um, Does Lumen Prints drop ship? If so, on with what platforms? Uh, yes, we uh, drop ship sort of our bread and butter. So most of our customers drop ship uh, to their customers. And I think I mentioned the uh, including your, your own store's branding uh, on the back of the canvas and on the packaging. Um, so basically for the drop ship process, just uh, enter your customer's name an address in the ship to address, and we take care of the rest after that. Uh, okay. That's the show earlier. So um, here's uh, some examples of the different uh, folding frame options that we have. Um, so these are a three quarter inch folding frames. Basic colors are silver, uh, gold, uh, and then um, white and black. Uh, we have a uh, 1.25 uh, frame canvas in uh, black. Uh, this is a secret one we don't, we haven't put up officially yet. Uh, this is the walnut color one. Um, this one is up live on our website. Uh, this is a uh, natural oak molding. Uh, this one's, uh, so all our stretcher bars are, stretcher bars, all our uh, floating frames are made of solid wood. Um, the oak is actually 100% wood uh, with a natural finish on top. Um, and then we have the uh, 1.5 inch uh, uh, floating frames, same colors of uh, black. Uh, also available, oops, black, white, uh, and then the, the silver and the gold. Uh, yes, so the oak frames are actually oak. So made of, it's, uh, it's a red oak, in fact. Additional corner stretchers to strengthen larger frames. 
Um, we do for the really large prints, we do have cross braces uh, added in. Um, because the wood that we use are pretty strong, um, up to a 30 by 40 or up to a 40 by 40 actually doesn't require the cross brace. I think when people like um, some manufacturers use really uh, thin or weak wood, in those cases, cross braces are more necessary. Or like if you go buy canvases from some in store, like uh, some brick and mortar shops. Um, some of them are also made out of MDF. Uh, that's even weaker material. So uh, in those cases, the cross braces are a must. Thank you, Lindsay. So Lindsay added in, um, whenever any side is larger than 42 inches uh, or 43 and above, we would add cross braces for that. A uh, question from iPhone. Um, I guess the name's not there. I have I've called in and asked about using security lock hardware. I was told that this is possible and you were looking to offering as a standard choice. Could you address that? Um, yes, if you do need security hardware, uh, you can send a note and order it. Um, in our new website, I think that is an option, but I'll double check or if not, we'll get that added in as an, as an option. Uh, all our oaks are solid wood. I mean, all our frames are solid wood. Not we don't use any MDF. Uh, okay, I think I covered all the uh, question from Tovo. Thanks for the answers about shipping costs. Can Luma Prints install accurate hanging wire for two or three piece set of art? both on floating canvas and regular canvas. Um, what do you mean by accurate hanging wire? Um, if you can help clarify that. But in the meantime, I'll partly address that question, I guess. Um, on the back of the canvas, uh, let's see any of these have an example. Um, oh, This is hey, Kenneth, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, so, so so what I mean was uh so let's say when um when a customer order a print and it's already it's ready to hang, mm -hmm. and when they hang it, the the level is not the same, it's not level right. So everything has to be accurate. Oh but, yeah. Yeah. So we um this hanging wire covers a little bit, but we actually print um, little dots here, like little Ds here to signify that it's uh, supposed to be hanging hardware. Um, and then we, that's where we install the, the D-rings for the hanging yeah. hardware. Um, so that helps us get pretty precise in terms of where we place the D-rings. Uh, and where these get placed are automated via a script. So I think it's, one third of the way down the, the canvas, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but it should be the same, let's say if they hang it, if yes. they set their level and just hang, hang it, yes. it should be the same. Yeah. Okay. One thing that is, um, may have a little bit more, well, some variation is the length of the wire. Um, we try to keep the wire like as much, uh, uh, the same length of wire, but it's hard to, it's, it, 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 that part has a little bit more human judgment in it, like how long yeah. they get the wire. Um, so where the D-rings are are pretty precise because that's, we print the markings there for them to install that on. Yeah. Um, there are tools for people to buy and screw into their wall. Um, and that you can adjust the height of the hanging part onto there um, to adjust the height of how the canvas hangs on the wire. Actually, for more precise hanging, we'd actually recommend uh, the sawtooth because you can just <laughs> measure in a straight line the hang the sawtooth right there. 
Um, so in fact, sawtooth is actually a more a easier way to hang, um, hang prints or sets of prints than than wires. Oh, you're not providing that, right? Oh, sawtooth comes standard um, on all the camps prints. Okay. Um, in fact, wire is the is the upgrade because it has more material and it's it takes more time to install. But the sawtooth come default. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Oh, by the way, feel free to um, voice out your questions too, <laughs> instead of chat chatting them in. Uh, let's see. A uh, question from Mike. Uh, I've seen other cameras reviews on YouTube where they focus attention on the number of staples used to attach the canvas to the stretchers. More staples equals less sag over time. How do you determine the number and spacing of the staples? Um, I guess from experience, the, our team members know how much staples to put in. Usually it's about like that wide, um, where it's not too, uh, like not too close together, but also not too far apart. Um, I guess that's just from experience and seeing what amount works. Uh, a question from iPhone. Uh, <laughs> we'll be ordering in quantity, UPS or FedEx will be too costly. Do you offer freight options or is that something we have to arrange? Yes, we do offer freight options for larger um, larger shipments. Also for uh, prints that are too large to ship UPS or FedEx. Um, so generally the largest size that we can ship by UPS or FedEx is uh, 45 by 60. Um, any prints larger than that would also go freight. Um, so if you'll have a large uh, order, uh, you can just email us, email our customer service team, and then um, we'll work with you one-on-one -on -one to uh, get the order set up uh, as well as arrange shipping. I guess that goes for any other special request, right? Like uh, if you have a special request, um, either you can uh, send it in as part of the comments or send us an email with it. Thank you for the comment, Lindsay, um, in reply. Our team is constantly checking the tautness of our canvases as they staple the canvas. We reinforce each canvas until it makes that drumming sound. Any other questions from anyone? Uh, I guess we can uh, wrap it up for today. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining. Uh, we really appreciate that. And um, as always, if you need anything, feel free to email us uh, or reach out by, by chat or phone. Um, and again, we'll be hosting these uh, webinars every week. So um, you know, please join for future webinars. Uh, the topic for our next week's webinar will be um, we'll be demoing uh, the use of our new uh, website that we are relaunching. So we rebuilt uh, the whole ordering, backend ordering process uh, to make it more robust. Uh, we know that <laughs> unfortunately there are some issues currently with some of our existing sites. So the new site would help solve a lot of those issues. All right, thanks everybody. Thanks Susan. Thank you, thank you so much. Thanks Charles, thanks Beth, thanks Mike, bye. -bye.